Live. Brought to you by Remington Rand, makers of the revolutionary new Remington Rolectric, and the new ladies' electric shaver, the Remington Princess. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. It's a great pleasure to welcome back as a guest panelist, one of the most endearing bachelors and radio and television stars in our town, Robert Q. Lewis. Dorothy, it's good to be back. To my left, a young lady, as a regular viewer, I'm delighted to be able to say uh, she has returned to normalcy after a period of some trouble with her eye. Ms. Arlene Francis. Just back to normalcy is nice enough. Thank you, Robert. <laughs> and now the little boy that lives next door to me in Mount Kisco and has grown up to be such an important, nice publisher of Random House, Mr. Bennett, sir. And now just interrupting his packing long enough to appear on this show, <laughs> after which he's leaving for Paris to cover the NATO conference, John Charles Davis. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line? It's nice to have Arlene back with both her eyes. It's a lot of trouble when she's only got one. And it's nice to have Robert Q. Lewis back. And in honor of all these notable events, we'll see if we can't give the panel the worst night they've had so far this year. And we're really nearly through the year. We'll have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger in just one minute. All right. Are we all ready for our first challenger now? I believe so. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there. Two. Sure. Is that an R O? Oh, Lick Yong. <laughs> yes, that's right. How do you think that? <laughs> Very bold handwriting panel. I want you to notice that. <laughs> Mr. Chu, where are you from? I'm from Singapore. From Singapore. Well, how nice to have you with us. I don't think we've had anybody from Singapore so far. Mr. Chu, the panel. Panel, Mr. Chu, will you join me over here? I wonder. Coming all the way from Singapore, if you know how we keep score. Yes. Every time you give a no answer, I flip a card, ten no's, and you win the game. Yes, all I All right, then score. let's... Oh, fine. Then let's let everybody at home and everybody here except the panel know exactly what your line is. All right, panel, uh, one bit of help. Mr. Chu is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with... Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Mr. Chu, uh, to the best of your knowledge, is there anyone in the United States doing what you do in Singapore? Yes. Uh, could it be done in New York City? Yes, too. Is it something that both men and women could take advantage of? Yes, that's true. Uh, would I be likely to avail myself of whatever it is that you do? Yes, of course. <laughs> I would say, in all fairness, Dorothy, so that there'll be no misunderstanding subsequently that at one time or another you might well be able to avail yourself. I see. Uh, is there anything uh, special or seasonal about what you do? I mean, is there a special period of a person's life when your service would be more applicable than no. others? Uh, small conference. <coughs> Lips. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Could either of the gentlemen on the panel use your services or product or whatever it is? Yes, I think so. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> Would you say that 
what you do or what you accomplish is more useful than strictly ornamental or luxurious? Yes. Well, do you deal in services? Yes. Do you work for a profit-making organization? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Lewis. Mr. Chu, uh, what you do must be unique in some way, and yet so many other people do it. Uh, was that again? <laughs> I, well, there must be something unique about what Mr. Chu does. Uh, is, it, is it unique, sir? And I don't mean to embarrass you. Uh, because of your nationality, is it, uh, would we consider what you do unique because you are, I assume, Chinese? Yes, Would I we think consider so. that unique? Yes, I think so. Uh, you do not work for a profit-making organization. That's no. Right. Do you do what you do in Singapore? Mm. Do you do what you do in Singapore? Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, would it be just as unique if you performed that service? Uh, could that service be performed in America as well as in Singapore? Yes. Uh, does it require special training, the type of work you do? Yes. Uh, would it require perhaps even more than a basic college education? Oh, it's not necessary. No. It is not necessary. Basic college education, two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Do people learn anything from you, Mr. Chu? Yes. Uh, you teach them something? Yes. Be heaven if you taught them English. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Does it? <laughs> That's absolutely right. Mr. Chu teaches English at a Chinese school in Singapore. And he's in this country as an observer in teaching at a school in Illinois. And he will be here for a few months. Uh, you come, I think, under the auspices of the Department of Health and Education and Welfare, the Division of International what Education. Mr. Mr. Daly, could I ask you to repeat a crack I think you just made about the male members of this panel? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chu said that you both could use, you know, his services. That's what I thought you said. <laughs> Well, Mr. Chu, we just flip everything over anyway in, in view of the fact that you've come a long way. And Arlene, I think, was just making a funny when she got that <laughs> one all out of, out of the blue like that. I noticed he said necessary so nicely that I thought he must be very hip on English language. <laughs> very hip on English yeah. language. Does Mr. Chu know good. what hip means? Yes. <laughs> As an English teacher, when you go back to Singapore, just tell them you're very hip on English language, they'll run you right out of Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for being our guest. Will you say good night to the family? beginning panel. Let's see what you can do with a second challenger. Will our second challenger come in and sign in, please? Lois Hill. Right? Is it Miss or Mrs.? Mrs. Mrs. Hill, and where are you from? Priest Lake, Idaho. Priest Lake, Idaho. Well, that's fine. I must say we haven't had many people from Idaho. Mrs. Hill, the panel. Panel, Mrs. Hill, will you join me over here, please? Uh, tell me, are you familiar with the way we keep score? Yes, All right. In that event, let's let the uh, folks at home and those who come here and joined us know exactly what your line is. Mrs. Hill is self-employed, and let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Cerf. Well, <clears throat> Mrs. Hill, Idaho always reminds me of those great big baked potatoes you get on the Northern Pacific. Would you have anything to do with farming? No. That's one down and nine to go. <laughs> Miss Kilgallen? Mrs. Hill, does um, music play any part in what you do? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Lewis. Well, we're getting nowhere. I hope you're not Gully's partner on those banana boats. <laughs> no. But uh, that song is old. Hill and Gully Riders, remember? Yeah. Well, uh, Hill and Gully Riders. No, no, no. You don't feel well yes, tonight? No, I'm not at all well. <laughs> Mrs. Hill, is there a product involved in what you do? Yes. Is this a product that uh, might be found in the home? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Would it be found uh, in the home, perhaps in one room? No. Um, as opposed to another. I mean, uh, more generally, and what I'm trying to say is, give me a Yeah, yes. you've had it, brother. That's three down and seven to go. 
Is this a useful product, Mrs. Hill? Yes, I would say so. Yes, I would. It has its uses, definitely. <laughs> can it be held in the hand? Yes. Uh, can it be bought in a department store? Yes. I think it's only fair to say that um, we are dealing here with a product which, the identification of which you are seeking, which may have at one stage or another different um, identifications. And under one or another of these identifications, there would be a relationship to a department store, yes. John, you know I haven't been well. <laughs> Better at this rate. They're not healing me at all. I was more worried with you when you didn't have those two eyes open there because you thought more of them. Uh, is this solid, this uh, product? <clears throat> solid? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. She's looking at John. Is it? Well, John always makes everything seem solid. You know that. <laughs> uh, is, it, um, is it of a material rather than metal? A soft material? Mm. Yes. I could have left for Paris this morning, couldn't I? Is it a manufactured product rather than a natural one? I think that we must, in the context of the happy occasion Just a short which has answer, brought honey. Mrs. Hill here, say <laughs> no. Thank you. Mrs. Hill, I don't know. has this product or any part of it ever grown naturally? Yes. Uh, would, in other words, is part of this product possibly uh, something that might have grown on a bush or a tree or something of that sort? No. no. I was thinking of missiles. <laughs> no. Five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. If this is not manufactured, but is grown naturally, could it be in the animal kingdom? And I would like fish to be embraced in the animal kingdom. Who ever embraced a fish? <laughs> 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 Sorry, this is asking too much of us. But your answer is yes. It is. Uh, is it ever alive when you deal with it? It could be. What do you it mean it could, could be? be? But is it ever? It, it could it be. It could be. <laughs> would you, you wouldn't unequivocally say that it was never alive, would you? No, mostly because it could be. Why don't we start getting could be? It's tough enough to get yes and no. Actually, Dorothy, when this is revealed, you will understand that there is a very definite... A light will shine. There's a very definite clue in this phrase, it could be. I mean, she wouldn't know. Well, let us say she would know at the time... Well, no, now I give too much away. Okay. What we're saying is in some... Could some occasions there, the, it could be, and some occasions it could not be. I see. Could be not. Who knows? I'd like to withdraw the whole thing. Is this animal rather than fish or bird life that you deal with? You mean, is it not fish or bird life? That's right. No. Yes, yes it is not right. fish no, it or is. bird life. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Has it any legs? Many or any? Any. Yeah. Any at all. <laughs> One. <laughs> Has it more than two? Two legs? More than two. More than yes. two. Has it as many as four? Yes. Is it limited to four? Yes. It could be. <laughs> um, would any person or any other animal eat this thing? No. Small conference. No. <laughs> I stand upon the expert testimony of the witness, and the answer is no, Dorothy. That's six down and four to go, Mr. Lewis. Well, and this is an animal, and uh, nobody would want to... Uh, uh, so it wouldn't be in a deep freeze. A deep freeze. <laughs> now, you said it could be bought in a department store. And then there was this could be, could be alive or could not be alive when you came in contact. Do you, uh, do you, uh, what do you call it when they go out and, uh, trap? trap. Do you trap these little animals, whatever they are? And they're yes. not eaten? No. 
Oh, I'd like... Do you sell wholesale? <laughs> I think I know. You make... Is this animal a fur-bearing animal? Yes. Oh, and is the fur so. which it bears something that every girl dreams that every she's girl. going to get and doesn't? No. Uh-huh. Is it a mink? Right. You try. Right. Oh. Mrs. And they Hill. never ate a mink, anybody, huh? Mrs. Hill says they taste awful. Really? So if you have a mink coat, don't try to cook it. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you were a lion or something, you wouldn't like a mink for an no. aperitif type of... No, no, no other animal eats the no. mink. That's very interesting. Let's try they it. They, 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 they have awful table them. manners, too, don't they? <laughs> they what? Minks? They're very sloppy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but beautiful. Beautiful. There's nothing, I think, quite as enjoyable as hearing women talk about mink. But I'm afraid we have to cut this off. Mrs. Hill, thank you. It's been a wonderfully interesting thank occupation. And nice of you to come all the way from Idaho to join us. Thank you. Good night. In just a moment... John, might yes, I have... One amendment, you say, it's fine to hear women talk about mink. That is when they're not your wife. <laughs> yes, I agree to the amendment. The amendment is now incorporated in the resolution. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No, 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 no. In just a moment, we'll meet tonight's... Come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I ask my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. Blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, yep. sir. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, you go to a different form of questioning. You will ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we'll begin with Robert Q. Lewis. Uh, are you in the entertainment world? <clears throat> Pardon me. Yes. <laughs> Miss Francis? Uh, would you be considered a leading man? <laughs> no. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Well, if you're not a leading man, uh, would you be considered a comedian? Mm, no. no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you have anything to do with music? That's my question for tonight, I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Lewis? I, uh, I work on a hunch. Are you, uh... Are we all sure that you are male? Are you a male? No. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Three down and seven oh, to go. Good luck. Goodness. Miss Francis. The most robust wow. female we've had on for some time. Uh, <clears throat> uh, did Dorothy ask if you were musical? And did yes. you answer Dorothy yes. asked if, if our guest had something to do with music. The answer was yes. I see. Are you a singer? Yes. <laughs> a bass. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Sturm? Have you made a lot of uh, very, very popular records? No. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> Is, could, could I ask a question that isn't a question, just a point of order, John? Point of order is acceptable, yes. Is somebody answering for our guest? Uh, no. No. Okay. Are you a group? <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to tell me that's a girl, Bob. Oh. Five down and five to go, Mr. Lewis. Oh, it couldn't be. Uh, are you famous? Have you been famous in our business for many, many years? 
What business is that? In the entertainment business. I will answer that question because I think this is an area in which our guest may be too modest. The answer to it is definitely yes. Oh. Miss Francis? Well, then, are you the greatest of the Red Hot Mamas? Yeah. <laughs> Three minutes. Let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? <laughs> Amy Edwards, is it Miss or Mrs.? <laughs> All right. Mrs. Edwards, where are you from? New York City. New York City. Mrs. Edwards, the panel. Panel of Mrs. Edwards. And now, will you join me over here quickly? Do you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. Fine. And let's let everybody at home and our friends here in the theater know exactly what your line is. All right, panel. Mrs. Edwards is salaried. We'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. You have about two minutes and a half. You work for a profit-making organization, Mrs. Yes, Edwards? Yes, I do. Uh, can both men and women avail themselves of your services? Yes. Uh, is there a product connected with what you do? No. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Edwards, <clears throat> do you require any training for the job that you perform? Not formal training. No, not within the terms of reference that we have on the program either. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. Edwards, do you work indoors more than outdoors? No. Outdoor Three morning. down and seven to go, Mr. Lewis. Do you work for both men and women? Yes. Do you, uh, do they come to you for your services? Uh, sometimes. Might I come to you for your services? Yes. Uh, would it be an unusual thing? Would I have some unusual reason to come to you, as opposed to an ordinary visit to a dentist or a <laughs> no, doctor? No, not in that term, no. It would be... It, you might have, in your own terminology, an unusual purpose in going, but at the same time, it might be a very usual purpose that brought you there. So Thank that you. on that basis, we'll have to give that you a doesn't no. Help me Four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Uh, mostly you work out of doors. Uh, well, the question as it was posed was, do you work more in more doors than I'm, out of doors? Right, and it's uh, mm -hmm. not specific, you very see, well. so that you do you, uh, uh, Are you ever off the ground, Mrs. Edwards? <laughs> Aren't we all? No. <laughs> no. That makes it uh, five down and five to go, reserving. I, I mean, was thinking of airplanes, so. Yeah, well, actually, we're, you know, we're elevators and things like that. Oh. Well, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Edwards, do you have anything to do with transportation of any kind? Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Oh, when you say out of doors, Mrs. Edwards, do you mean in the open air or just not in an enclosure? But what could that be? That oh. cannot be answered yes or no. The question is originally posed, Dorothy, was do you work more indoors more than outdoors? Uh -huh. in and that was a no. What oh. uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Edwards does, she moves about and can be considered to be doing as much work outdoors as indoors. Now, does that answer your term of Kind of. Uh, do you wear anything other than ordinary street clothes in what you do? No. And I'm afraid we've run out of time, oh. and I have to flip them all. And Mrs. Edwards is a private detective, does some examinations for insurance companies uh, and, and uh, things uh, like that. One of the nicest private detectives you've ever seen. Thank you very much. And now, until next week, with the thought, Robert Q. Lewis, it's nice to see you back with us again. And uh, Arlene, it's so nice to have you with both eyes and you bright and sparkling. Trip. I will. Thank you. And with this happy thought, this is John Daly saying good night, Miss Kilgallen. Good night, John. Bon voyage. And good night and come again, Bob. Thanks, Dorothy. Good night and good night, two healthy eyes. <laughs> <laughs> good night, dear boy. Good night, Bennett. John, take care of the president. Good night. Uh, this
This would be a happy assignment, and to the end that I can do anything at all in that area, I certainly shall. We've had uh, a good visit with you tonight, and might I say it's nice to have had you visit with us on What's My Line. If you'd like to be a contestant, send a picture we can keep and your occupation to What's My Line. CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by American Airlines. What's My Line is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS television network. Be sure to see Remington Rand's two other great television shows, Leave It to Beaver on Friday nights and Gunsmoke on Saturday nights, all on CBS. This is Hal Sims speaking.